Hello, everybody. Today, we'll be drawing a pumpkin patch. Now, I've chosen to do today's artwork with oil pastels. So this is a really cheap set that I got at the art store for maybe a dollar. Um, and then this is an expensive set that I got online. <laughs> you can see it's a little bit in disarray, but um, this was more expensive, maybe about $50 for this whole set. These are really nice and very soft, uh, almost the consistency of lipstick. Whereas these are a little bit harder, um, cheaper material. So I'd like to start with these and then do the finishing touches with this. Today we'll be starting with a pencil. Um, and then I, this is just colored pastel paper, um, pretty much construction paper. I've chosen orange because well, I'm doing pumpkins, and uh, yeah, I felt like this was a nice Halloween-y theme and color to start with. So, I'm first going to do a pretty preliminary sketch here just to get my main shapes. So, what I want is the horizon line to be somewhere around here, and then we're going to have a big pumpkin right in the foreground. Maybe somewhere like right here. And these pumpkins don't have to be perfect circles. In fact, most pumpkins aren't perfect circles. They're all sorts of different shapes. So I'm going to do one, two, three pumpkins in the foreground. Then um, a couple various pumpkins getting smaller as it moves up because they're getting further away. Um, so I won't have to sketch all the ones I'll be doing, but just the main ones. Um, and now I want to do a barn up here um, on the horizon. So let me go ahead and sketch this barn shape, which is going to be A red, a red barn. One's all said and done. Mm -hmm. On the roof here. So I found a picture online of this pumpkin patch, but I am not really going exactly off the picture. I've moved the pumpkins around to my liking, as well as the barn size and everything. When you're copying a picture, especially one you didn't take, it's good to change elements of it um, to suit your needs. You don't need to go off the picture. In fact, it's better to, to make it your own. Um, that way, you get a little bit of a say in where the things are, and you can take a little bit more ownership of it. It's not just copying something else. That's a good barn shape here. It might be a little light on your screen, but I've got a barn, and I've got these pumpkins, and I like the flow of it going like this. I might add some clouds in here, um, just to balance a little bit on that side, and maybe some pumpkins over here, just because I want it to have this sort of spin. I'm going to actually bar add another farmhouse right here, a smaller one, um, just to yeah, give, give a little balance to this piece. Um, it's important that your piece not be unbalanced. Okay, cool. So I've got... Um, actually, this one, maybe I should run right into that one. A long farmhouse in the distance, and then this bigger one up close. And I think that's all I really need for my preliminary sketch. When we're doing these drawings, paintings, pastels, whatever, um, especially paintings and pastels, you're going to be adding lines on top, and I won't see my pencil at the end anyways, so I might as well get started with some of the color. Um, I'm going to have the sun coming from this direction because that's what it is in the picture. That's the way things are lit. And 
So I want to kind of outline where the shadow will be on these, especially these front pumpkins. Shadow will be something like that. Uh -huh. That way I know where to put my brightest colors. I'm gonna actually just start with my dark colors. So I'm gonna find, I'm gonna use this cheaper black. And looks like I need to peel the paper away a little bit. Peel the paper away. And now I'm going to do just starting lightly, and then as I go on, I'll add more pressure. But starting lightly, just to get the outline, fill that in. This is the shadow of these. Since it's the middle of the day, the shadows will be nice and dark. That way everything else looks nice and bright. All right. A little bit in here. Uh, and coming off the right side will be some shadow. Um, underneath all of the foliage, all of the leaves and stems and stuff, there's a lot of black shapes. So I'm going to sort of scribble in black here and there. And that's really just the shadow under um, all these shapes. And it gets lighter as it goes up. So I don't want to do too much towards our horizon here. I'll also do the sides of these buildings. Um, again, very lightly because I'm going to be adding more on top. Sweet. That's a good start, I think, for for black. Be a little bit, be a little bit of a mountain range. We'll be back here too. Um. Now I'm going to go. I like to go kind of back and forth between the brightest and the darkest colors. Um. So I'm going to go ahead and do this bright red on front of the barn. Going ahead and going over any of the detail lines. So I'm taking this really bright red, going in. You'll see if you smudge them together, it actually will mix with the black um, when I do this, like this. So you can mix that black darker. It also gives it a little bit of a warm red tone, which is what I want. Um, go ahead and do this. Here. Darkness. And that's actually going to go all underneath. Forgot to need to add a little bit more black in that further one. Okay. Nice. All right. Got those barns in the bright red. Let's take the bright orange now and chunk in these pumpkins. Chunk in the pumpkins. So just roughly fill it up here. Cool thing about oil pastels is you can layer layers on top of each other. You can blend all of that. And it's a little bit harder to do with these cheap ones, so that's why I like to use them first, just to get in a base coat on top of here. This pumpkin in the front is a little bit more yellow than the other one, so I'm going to go a little lighter, lighter touch. And some of them are more orange, some of them are a little bit more yellow. Every pumpkin is slightly different. Color. So I'll be adding yellow in as well. Put that on. Now that's where I'm gonna add more pumpkins than I drew to start. Little tiny almost dots of them at the horizon, but then they get bigger as they come forward. 
I want most of the pumpkins to be in this U shape, so I'm gonna make sure I do plenty over here, and less on this side, just so the, the picture has a nice flow to it. Mm -hmm. okay. I like to take a step back, look at my painting, see where maybe there's something missing. Maybe one like right here would be nice. Cool. That looks pretty good. Add a little bit more to this. All right, well, I'm actually going to use a brown to finish up these pumpkins. So the shadow area, instead of being orange, will be a brown. Still using my cheaper pastels because these are, again, about the 50th of the price. So whenever I can get away with using the cheaper ones, I like to, especially in these earlier layers where I have to fill a bunch of space. Because these ones actually run out pretty quick. You can see my uh, white here is down to a, about an inch um, because I use it a lot. So I changed my habits because I don't want to have to keep buying them. Though if I was selling a bunch, maybe I would only use the nice ones because they are much nicer to use for most things. So I'm going to go ahead and go in these ones in the distance and put in the brown just on the right, the right side of most of these because I don't want, I want them to maintain the sun coming from the left side. So the only place I should see brown is on the right side of these pumpkins. So it's like two pumpkins, and they have a sort of a section sectional look to them so I'm going to try to maintain that now by instead of just a, a curve we get little um, indents moving up just to give it that pumpkin-y shape I don't know what you call the that shape technically but... yeah, like that good all right now I'm going to go ahead and get my yellow. This is a this is a very white, pale looking yellow. That's okay. Because I'll probably use the nicer one later. I'm going to go over the left side of most of these pumpkins with this pale yellow. And that'll brighten up that side that's hitting the sun. So my pumpkins, you know, you say, what color is a pumpkin? Sure, it's orange, but in reality, it's more than just orange. It's got browns and yellows, even whites and blacks in there, all sorts of things. All right. I did enough work, I think, for now on the pumpkin. Oops, I don't want to mix up my oil pastels. Now I'm going to go in with the, get some of the uh, leaves in. So I want to be a little bit random with how I do this. So I'm going to go ahead and just do bigger shapes towards the front, like so. There's sort of big leaves on pumpkin plants, but there's also vines. Um, so I'm doing kind of a scribbly motion for these closer up areas. And then as I get further back, I'm going to do smaller little scribbles. Um, leaving a little bit of that orange paper to shine through, which I can always cover up, but sometimes it's nice to see a little bit of the paper ties these pastel paintings together. I'm going to go in with a brighter green too. In a minute. Just 
There's also, if I'm looking really carefully at my painting, the whole thing is a little bit, all the, the leaves are a little bit brighter in this area and a little bit darker on the left. So I'm going to press a little bit le less hard as I do this right side over here. Just get a little bit less material. I'm going to mix that black up here with this green too. Because there's sort of like a distant mountain thing happening there. All right. Just scribble, scribble in the rest. Nice to not get too caught up in any little part of this, especially in the earlier stages. Now in the foreground here, I've actually got dirt um, and not so much leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of brown scribbles, just lightly. I don't want the brown like on the pumpkins, I don't want it dark. I'm going to mix brown just in a scribbly like that. And I'll probably adjust that. Oh, let's add some gray in now to that bottom. Yeah. A little bit of gray. Gray is actually a very useful color I find in pastels because especially the color pack I have um, comes out a little bit too bright sometimes. So gray can neutralize a color a little bit. I'm realizing I forgot the stems. Um, I'm going to go ahead and with my pencil and just outline where the stem should be on these. One there, one kind of here, and then go in with a with the white stem. Make that white's bright, and the white as well. I'm gonna kind of get the reflection of the sun against this, the hardest hit areas. Towards us. Just get some of that white. This tower up here is actually white. And there's a line across the edges of these uh, buildings. Also, the outside of the doors on the buildings are white. And I'll probably re go over this with the nicer white pastel. But like I said, that stuff's expensive and I'm kind of low on it, so. All right. Throw in little bits of white into the leaves too. So it's nice to have, when you have a color just one spot, it kind of sticks out, but if you mix it in with other parts of your painting too, it can be nice. I just remembered I wanted to make some clouds up here, so I'm going to go ahead and just scribble in some clouds. A good rule of thumb for clouds is the higher up ones should be bigger and the lower to the horizon should be smaller. Just kind of randomly put them up there. And now that I've got some clouds in, let's go ahead and do the sky. So I want the sky to be darker blue as I go upwards. So I'm going to use my lighter blue first. Mix just nice and loosely scribble the whole sky. And I'll add a little bit of darker blue on top. So, looks pretty good. And now the darker blue, go from the top, and go down about a quarter of the way, or a third. There we go. 
anywhere else I can put this blue, maybe a little bit in the in some of these leaves, just so I have a little bit in the bottom as well. Okay, I'm going to do a lighter green to fill in the rest of the leaf area. So just where I see orange that's not a pumpkin, I'm going to go ahead and scribble this on. And this is all with this uh, very cheap pastels. I think I got, oh, here it is, buy one, get two. So these were under a dollar each. I bought, this was two twenty-five, but I got three of them. So three packs for under $3, which is awesome. Now Maple just woke up, so <laughs> I had to grab her. I might take a break here for a minute and pick this up. But yeah, yeah. She's uh she was uh, taking a little nap while everybody else is going doing doing their thing today. Maple, what do you think of this pumpkin patch? We were just at the pumpkin patch a couple days ago, which was lovely. Really nice. So what I'm doing is just filling in all the rest of the area that of orange paper with this light green. Mm -hmm. And I'm just already really liking how this yeah. is looking. Um, it's, I'd say, mostly filled in now, like most of the paper is filled in. Or hey. Uh, a little of this light green into those mountains. And the, those mountains in the background, it's often mountains in distance have a purpley look to them. So I'm actually going to use this darker blue that I use at the top of the mountain, or at the top of the sky, rather. Put that in here. And then put a little bit of, actually, a little bit of red in to purple that out. And then go back with that light green just to mellow out the purple a little bit. There you go. Uh, That's looking nice. I should probably do the same over here on the other side of the barn, just for consistency. Yeah. Look at Maple's little fingers in the corner of the screen. <laughs> yeah, Maple. So, I'm going to add some yellow into the stems here. What am I missing? Oh, this top of the roof here should be kind of a darker gray. So I'm actually going to go ahead really lightly with the black. And then with the gray, just fill in the rest of this roof shape. Yeah. This sort of crooked yeah. rectangle here. Yeah, what? I'll take a break in a second. And then it's the same thing. On this further one. There we go. And that's looking pretty nice. Looking mighty fine. So I'm going to leave it at that and I'll pick that up in a minute. For you, it will be uh, no time at all. All right. One second. So here I am, a couple hours later, but ready to go. I've sped the video up. Uh, because I noticed after the fact that the clip had a lot of my head in it. But here I am using a paper stump that's rolled into a tight um, pencil shape here, and I just rub the pastels into the paper. That really fills up any spaces that the pastel misses and really intensifies the color. You can see it definitely in this black, how it darkens the black. It tends to darken dark colors, um, and there's my head getting in the way. But yeah, here I am just going all around, and I can use, after you doing the black, a little bit of the color gets onto the stump, so I can actually use it to darken or color other areas with it. So I'm just going in through all the shadows, just kind of randomly putting in 
shadows into the foliage there, as well as uh, cleaning up the edges. Uh, there's the stump there, you can see how it's gotten a tip. So now I'm going in with the nicer pastels. These are this, what are they called? Uh, Sennelier oil pastels. Um, and you can see the quality of them is thicker. It's very much like lipstick. Um, and I love how it sort of creates a texture as well because so much of it comes off onto the paper. Um, so I'm putting that right on top. You can see me just putting little dots of black everywhere. It looks a little unnatural now, but as I go on, it should those should fade into the background a little bit. Now adding this nicer orange on top of the pumpkins, maintaining that shape um, that pumpkins have with the rounded uh, outsides. Adding in a bright yellow on the where the sun hits these pumpkins. You can see, yeah, I just kind of, I like to go back and forth with the light and the dark. Here's some white, and when it looks too light, especially with this soft pastel, you can, I'm using my finger, using the edge of it to get those sharp edges on the building. Um, and anywhere I feel like the edge is maybe too much, I can always go back in over with some red. Here I'm drawing the clouds over again, um, and then I'm going in with the nicer pastels for the sky. Uh, there's my head, one more time. <laughs> Camera angles. Uh, so I've got the darker blue again. Mountains in the background. In blue, and I added green and a little bit of red and purple into those. And what I did with the clouds is I used the stump to really kind of fade that white into the blue. and and then only a little bit of the white on top to get the most uh, brightest areas on the top left of the clouds, mirroring kind of how the pumpkins are lit. Um, the very bottom of the page, you can see I just scribbled a bunch of browns, oranges, a little bit of gray uh, to get a dirt texture. Um, yeah, and pr every decision I made was informed by what I was seeing on um, the reference photo, which again, I sort of altered to my liking um, these buildings in the back. There were much more and they were all the way to the left, but I felt like the flow of the pumpkins going to the right really helped. So if you're um, making your own, I, I recommend changing and using elements, you can use multiple photos for your reference, whatever you need to do. But uh, have fun. Uh, hope you like, like this one, and uh, I'll see you next week with another art tutorial. Bye-bye.